Hey Blender file and a few days back I made this animated loop inside of Blender and a few people asked me to make a tutorial on this so here's how I did this. So the first things first is that uh, <laughs> delete everything because we will add it later and start with adding in a cylinder and make the cylinder vertices segment to be 3 and the capital type to be nothing and go to edit mode and move this on the z axis by 1 unit and back to object mode and scale this on the z axis by 8 units and then just press ctrl a and scale and we have our base mesh ready right go back to edit mode and add in some loop cuts horizontally about 50 and then vertically about 5 on each side So what this basic oops no three ah. so what this basically does is make uh, square faces on each side almost square doesn't really matter okay then I'm gonna add in a modifier that is called a simple deform modifier and change the angle to be 360 and the axis to be z axis and we get this twisty little thing now we need to combine it so add in an empty this is going to be our driver and copy the sub uh, simple deform modifier and change it to bend and select the axis origin to be that empty object and use the axis to be the y axis and I choose I'm choosing the y axis because in the front view we'll get the shape that we want you can choose the x axis as well but then you'll have to go to the right view so front is fine and axis to be the y cool now if yeah <laughs> Now if you select the mesh and rotate it on the z-axis, you can see it starts to spin around. So that's what we need. That's why we have the empty over there. So next thing is adding in that particles inside of it. But before we add the particles, you can see that if I change the angle on the bend, you can see there's an overlapping segment over here, right? So these vertices are overlapping, we don't need them. So to do so, so to fix them, I'm gonna add in a weld modifier. So that's going to take care of the overlapping edges. Awesome. Now let's add in a cube. This is going to be our particle child. Particle child and add in some loop cuts about five on each side. So R. And that looks about it. Now I'm going to scale the outermost edges so that it match goes near the rim. And this will, this will give us a lovely... Mm, what do we call that supporting loop when we'll add in a subdivision surface on this one okay that looks great now go, uh, go down to the object data tab and add in a shape key from the object mode and then add another shape key and call it sphere and change the value to one go to edit mode back and go to vertex select select everything right click and smooth vertices and press shift r to repeat that a couple of times and then scale it back to its original size and now press Alt Shift S and make it to sphere. Awesome. The shade is smooth and it looks like a sphere. Now, if you play with the value, you can see it changes from a cube to a sphere, back to cube, sphere, cube, sphere. Awesome. Now let's just animate it as well, right over here. So in the first frame, I'm gonna keyframe the value. And in the 60th frame, I'm gonna change it to one and add in a keyframe. And till 120 frame, I'm gonna keep it at value of one and add in a keyframe from 120 to 160 or 180. I'll change the value back to zero, add in a keyframe, and from 182 to 50, I'm gonna keep the value to be zero. And now it's looping, and the first frame and the last frame is the same. So we'll change the end frame to 250. 249 because the first frame and the last frame is repeating and that's give them an extra that gives us an extra frame that you don't want okay now select our uh, mobius strip thing over here and go to the particle system add in a particle system change it to here and in the source use modify stack uncheck random order and change the emit from faces to vertices because we need every vertex to make a single object right cool 
Now we need every vertex to be having only one object and no overlap. So I need to count how many vertices we have. So go into edit mode and you can see we have oh just like this. Okay. We can see we have 936 vertices. So and if I uncheck this last one because it's getting welded, we have 918. So I'm gonna put the number 918 in the number. And that gives us this lovely uh, hairy caterpillar thing okay go down to the render tab and change the render as path to object and uncheck show emitter down here choose the instance object to be our cube and you can see it appears on our mesh awesome now go down to the viewport display and uncheck show emitter as well because we don't need to see that and let's scale our cube down from the edit mode because it's just it's a big bit too big. Hmm. That looks about right. There. Cute. A little bit of overlap is fine. It's not gonna be that noticeable once it becomes a sphere. Awesome. Maybe just a bit more tiny. Okay. Cool. What's next? Now it's time to animate our Mobius strip. So go to the first frame and select our Mobius strip. It's currently selected, which is not visible because we have the particles over here. Alright, go to the front view and add in a keyframe in the rotation by pressing I on your keyboard, keyboard uh, to set a keyframe, or you can go over here to the object data and add in a keyframe. Never mind. Okay, and this is the, we'll do the same thing. Go to the 60th frame. Oh, now we're gonna go right at the end at 250 and change the Z rotation to be 360 and add in a keyframe over there. Now one thing to notice over here is that this is an easing uh, interpolation. So it starts slow and then it catches up speed and then it ends slow. And we don't want that, we want it to be at a constant speed. So to do that, just select every keyframe in the timeline by pressing A while hovering on the timeline and press V for vector and choose the vector option okay so it just changes your interpolation type so you can press V V for uh, violet or vector and choose the vector interpolation cool so now it has a constant speed at which it's fading So we have our animation and our mobile strip. Now it's time for lighting and rendering. So that's simple. Uh, let's start by adding in a camera and press Control Alt Numpad Zero. Uh, if you don't have that, you can go to View and Align View to select. The, oops, Align Camera, uh, Align View, Align Camera to select it. Okay, and we're gonna make this a square camera. So in the Output tab. I'm going to change this to a 102 full resolution and you can see it's a bit uh, out of place so I'm going to change the X location to be 0 and the Z location to be 0 as well and bring it in focus. You can change the focal length as well, I'm going to do that, I'm going to make it a 30mm lens and zoom in. Perfect. So there it is, we have our movie strip animating huh great so we are lighting it inside EV so go to the render tab first thing you want to do is enable ambient occlusion bloom screen space reflections go down to shadows change the cube size to be 1024 and enable high bit depth boom that's almost all the things that you need to do done okay now if I go to rendered view you can see it looks really the Go to the world tab and make the background to be almost pitch black. Oops, not completely black, but almost pitch black. Let's add in a light source, a point light. And I'm gonna make the point light to be about the radius of 3 meters. So that pretty much fills the whole uh, loop. Great. So we get this lovely uh, rim light or fill light, you can say. I don't know. Let's just increase the strength to be about 350 or something and give it a color of your choice. I'm gonna go with, uh, I don't know, purple. 
Yeah, that looks okay. Cool. Now we need to add some complementary lights at the top and the bottom. So add in a light, an area light, and I'm gonna place it over here. And I'll scale this on the x axis about that big. Whoops, pressed edge. And move it onto place and well, there looks good. I'm gonna place it just a bit at the front, get a bit more light, and scale it on the Y as well. So that pretty much captures the whole thing. And I'm gonna add in some more strength, like about 65. That looks good. So we get this lovely catching rim light at the edge. All right, and I'll press Alt D to instance it and rotate it 180 degrees on the whatever axis this is. I don't know, Y axis. Okay, and place it down about at the same distance. So we get that rim light effect. Cool. Now to change the materials. We are done with the lighting, we are done with the modeling and animation. Only thing remains is the material. So to add material, you don't have to select this, you have to select our cube material, a uh, cube object. And I'll change the timeline to be a shader editor. And add in a new material on this and make it metallic. Bam. And immediately you can see it's a bit more reflective and shiny and that's what we want. Now to play around with the roughness, we'll add in a texture, a noise texture. And add in a mapping node to the noise texture and use the object coordinate. Now the problem over here is that if I decrease the scale, you can see each of them have the same noise texture almost same noise texture on each of them and we don't really want that it looks different because it has a different orientation but they have the UVs at the same space so what we'll do is you select the object and we'll choose an instance object and put the cube in there as well now you can see it gives an overall roughness to the whole thing now I can play with the roughness, uh, the scale, and add in a converter, color ramp. Play with the color ramp as much as you want. Make them look good, look really good, and plug them into the roughness. Bam! And look at that. We get some reflections, some roughness. A bit more roughness, and looks good. Play the scale a bit. Look at that. Okay, I can change the light on these things. I don't want it to be white. Something contrasting the purple or complementing the purple. I'm gonna go with cyan. Looks okay. One last thing we have to do is add in a light probe reflection cube map and make it really big. And this basically contains lighting information inside of itself. So go down over here to indirect lighting in the render settings. Of EV and click on bake in direct lighting and it'll bake it for you it's right there it's had baked now you can see you can delete this so it has 15, 16 MB in memory awesome so you can see it gives a bit more reflections to play around with another thing you can do is under the screen space reflection disable half trace and increase the trace precision to 1 or something near to 1 okay you can play around with the bloom. Currently, there is almost no bloom. And I'm gonna decrease the threshold to 0.6. Increase the intensity of the bloom and the radius as well. You can see the radius does a major part. There. You can play around with that as much as you want to your liking whatever floats your boat okay so that's pretty much done now you can just play around with the light or you can do that in the compositor using a hue saturation node and it will give us pretty much the same thing better to play with the lighting you get a bit more control so this is really quickly done I mean you can improve it way more if you want to you can play around with it even more I'm gonna keep it over here for now uh, threshold 2.5 Cool. You can also add in a, a rim light if you want. I don't really want to do that. I mean, it looks okay. 
gives us a little white reflection, but never mind. Okay, time to render this thing out. We have our material, we have our animation. Now uh, go back to the output tab, select your output directory. I'm gonna place it on the desktop. You can see I have rendered it quite a few times. Uh, whatever. I change the output to be MPEG video, make it H.264 and MP4. Uh, that's a preset over here. And then you can just go at the top to the render tab and hit render animation. And it'll start rendering out for you. Bam! So there we have it. So this is how you make this thing inside of Blender. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I just went with the flow, didn't uh, script anything, just made it how it is. Right, it's a one single take with a few, few cuts, some edits, whatever. And that's pretty much how you do this in Blender. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and learned something from it. And I'm gonna catch you in the next video. Blender file out.